Hello, welcome to the AWS Summit London. Uh, we're live on Twitch, and this is the first session of the day. And uh, we're going to start with a really cool topic, which is machine learning. My name is Julian, I'm an AWS evangelist, and I've got with me two experts, right? I've got Dennis, a principal solution architect uh, specializing in machine learning from Luxembourg, and uh, Paul, uh, principal Hi. solution architect based in London. So welcome, guys. Hi, uh, thank everybody. You for, uh, thank you for thank your time. You. Uh, so, machine learning. Let's start with the basics. Uh, Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about AI and machine learning, what are all those words? They're a bit confusing to everybody. Sure, that's actually one of my favorite questions. Uh, I hear a lot uh, of confusion uh, out there. And uh, if you ask um, a specialist, if you ask somebody like a scientist who worked in that field, the answer is very clear. You know, machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence uh, generally. Uh, and the key thing to understand here is that um, a lot of AI and machine learning is really about the magic. And we often forget that uh, what used to be magical now is, you know, uh, everyday uh, <laughs> phenomenon. Like, yeah. uh, for example, the early AI research was focusing on, you know, planning, navigating, right? Route A uh, to, to point A to point B. And uh, now we just uh, use navigators. We don't think that that's magic, right? Yeah, it's but just that there. Was, it's just there. That was the early day kind of AI. And that was using kind of deductive reasoning, right? Uh, and then machine learning later on was uh, added as a way for machines to acquire information that was previously manually put by humans into it, right? And so that's why there's a lot of emphasis on machine learning now, because it's enabling more complex uh, kind of uh, solutions, more complex algorithms. Okay, so guys, I, I, you know, Amazon is, is uh, a pretty big website, but not only that, right? And uh, from, from the very early days of Amazon, um, we've been using machine learning at scale to solve a number of problems. So, uh, Paul, maybe tell us about that. What, what is uh, Amazon, uh, why is Amazon using machine learning, for example? Well, it just helps us solve everyday problems. And that's really, when you talk about machine learning, people forget that what we're trying to do is just solve problems. So, take Alexa. Everyone's quite familiar with Alexa now. It's doing natural language understanding and automatic speech recognition. We're using it for, for other initiatives as well in our logistics supply in terms of how do we manage the ro robots and how do we do the automation of the robots. So, and more, more recently, there's been um, our, our new service, Amazon Go, which we, we've just launched in Seattle. And this is really how we're trying to transform the shopping experience. How do we make it different? Why do you have to queue? Why do you have to scan all your items? I don't know like you guys, but I hate shopping. So it's like, so, you know, how do you solve those problems? And this is really what's exciting about machine learning. The algorithms are great, but it's actually how do you practically implement them day to day? Right. Yeah, so Amazon Go. Have you, have you been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Many Tell times. Us about and, uh, it. Speaking about the magic <laughs> here, right? Yeah. Uh, when it first uh, launched, you know, every time I'd go to Seattle, I'd take that opportunity <laughs> to go to uh, uh, the store. But uh, on the recent trip, I didn't even bother because I've been there so many times already. I kind of uh, know the label. The it's, gone. it's yeah. common yeah. sense, right? Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's already there. Uh, it, we're used to it. Uh, and uh, speaking of Alexa, like I don't know how many, do you have Alexas in your home? Uh, yes, I've got, uh, um, they're everywhere. And my wife says, now I talk to Alexa more than I talk to her. So oh, it's like, so, that but, sounds bad. but my children are growing up with Alexa. They yeah. control their lights. Right. You know, they, they listen to the radio through it. And that's the experience our children are seeing now day to day. Yeah, so Alexa, Amazon Robotics, uh, Amazon Go, and the drones as well. You know, it's still being tested, but it's it's there the drone delivery. So these are, I would say, machine learning at pretty large scale, right? Given uh, given Amazon scale, but we work for AWS, right? And we're all about the customer, and we're all about helping every single developer out there build sophisticated apps using machine learning, and. Over the years, we've uh, built a number of services, right? The uh, application services, as we call them. So let's take some time and talk about those. And uh, let's start with recognition. Mm -hmm. Because I think there's a, a very big event coming in the UK. Uh, and uh, it's going to uh, involve recognition. So Paul, Well, I guess the, uh, as the Englishman here, English I should be talking here. about it. Tell so, us about it's, um, so, so there is uh, allegedly a, a, a quite a famous wedding happening in, in a few weeks' time. And one of um, the, the, the local um, Producers Sky are actually doing some quite interesting things now with recognition because what they're doing is they're actually using the technology to track 
celebrities and to attract known people in the crowds in the wedding. And they're using technologies which, such as recognition and recognition video in real time to actually start finding where people are from the various cameras around the different sites. Yeah, and this right. is quite exciting. Yeah, it's going to be it's different. It's going to be quite it? fun. No. So, so, uh, any, uh, any other thing that uh, recognition can do, yeah, Dennis? For example, another kind of local application, Artfinder is a company based in UK, and they've done actually a pretty cool thing, which is using recognition and applying it to not photos, but art. And so now, this application is helping uh, people discover art based on the contents recognized inside. So if you like pictures about animals, right, and then you, you will discover new artists that offer the same using recognition. Yeah, Artfinder, a really cool startup. And you know, we're, we're talking about, I would say, fun use cases for AI, but there's also some serious, really serious work being done. Uh, we have a customer in the US called Marinus Analytics, and they build uh, tools for law enforcement, and they have a specific tool that helps find missing kids on the internet. So they build a face collection with all those yeah. poor kids that have gone missing, and they go and, and explore the darkest uh, places of the web, trying to find them and, and rescue them. So uh, yeah, recognition, you know, really, uh, really great service. Um, let's move on to, uh, to another service called Poly, and it's got a companion service called Transcribe. So Dennis, what are those two about? So Poly is really about uh, generating speech, human-like speech. So from text going to speech, and Poly supports, what is it, 25 languages, mm -hmm. right? And then yep. many different voices for each of the languages. Uh, and Transcribe is doing the, the opposite, is, is taking the speech, and these are WAV files, MP3 files, MP4 files, right, and so on right. and so forth, that uh, you then uh, generate the actual text for. Right. And there uh, are clearly lots of uh, applications that we can Yeah, so about. Paul, what, what customers typically do with uh, Transcribe, let's say? Well, with, with Transcribe, we're seeing customers doing things with contact centers. Yeah. So we're, we're seeing them start to actually think about taking all of their call recordings, putting them um, into text, and then actually doing analysis on, on the contacts coming through. So suddenly you're really gaining insights into the customer experience and using that data to really drive change in terms of how you engage with your customers. Yeah, and recently we announced a, a new customer for Transcribe called Echo 360, and it's an ed tech company. And what they do is actually uh, pretty simple. They uh, they record uh, video classes at uh, colleges, you know, universities, and so on, and they, they, they share them with a, a broad community of students, et cetera, and now using Transcribe, they can automatically transcribe the actual uh, uh, presentation, the actual class, into text, right? So yeah. now uh, students can also get uh, the, the text uh, version of the class, and of course you could translate it and you could run all kinds of analytics on it. So okay. yeah. very simple use case, but very powerful. And I just mentioned translation, so of course, we have a service called Translate. Dennis, what does yes. this service do? So <laughs> in the... I guess we can imagine what it does. Yes, in the <laughs> olden days, of course, uh, machine translation was really clunky, it was really not producing the kind of results. And now with the deep learning, uh, we're seeing really high quality uh, results being produced. And there are many, many natural applications, of course, going from one language to the other. Right, uh, Hotels.com, for example, is using uh, this for reviews uh, and review uh, translations. That's natural. People log in to the site from all kinds of countries, and they need to uh, be able to do that and, and view the, 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 the reviews um, and the feedback uh, in their natural language. We have a blog post out, uh, in, in fact, how to translate uh, comments on Twitch, as a matter of yes. fact. So if you're, uh, yep. uh, you know, following that was us built here, by uh, uh, some <laughs> of our solution architects. I think, yeah? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So you can go and try that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Let's move on. There's. Uh, we're still working with uh, the the high level services here. So uh, uh, we saw how to translate and transcribe and and generate uh, speech from text, etc. What about analyzing? Uh, what about understanding the actual text? So I think we have a service called Comprehend. Uh, and Paul, what does Comprehend do and what do you see customers doing with it? Well, Comprehend's really interesting because what Comprehend's doing is actually starting to look at the sentiment of contact and, and, and really look at what's happening in your interactions. And, and customers such as the Washington Post are starting to look at that to start to see how they're categorizing their text, what, what, what's the comments coming back. 
mix that in with maybe doing uh, that, that advanced analytics on call recordings, and maybe we touched on the contact center before. Tying these things together or other sort of e-commerce type solutions, you're really starting to have access to data and to gain insights that you didn't have before. Right, and I think there's uh, there are actually two ways you can use Comprehend, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can do, um, I would say basic analysis on a single yeah. document, and there's this more advanced thing called topic modeling, right, and we right. got a lot of questions on that, so. Uh, sure, tell sure. Us about it. So, of course, <laughs> uh, like uh, Julian said, we could start with uh, extracting name identities, extracting sentiment even uh, from the text, but sometimes uh, you don't actually know what you're looking for, right? And so, if you have lots and lots of documents, you may want to categorize them by the kinds of topics uh, that these, uh, these documents uh, contain news articles, um, you know, blog posts, and maybe even social media. And so what uh, Comprehend allows you to do is uh, upload a whole bunch of uh, documents, uh, save it into S3 and apply Comprehend, and Comprehend will automatically figure out, okay, given, say, 10 topics, 20 topics, right? These are the top words for each topic. Uh, so, so the magic here is that Comprehend decides what a topic is based on the kind of words that it finds wow. in, in the collections of yeah. documents. So it's really helpful for you to figure out what are the documents yeah, and about. It's fully managed, right? So yeah. you don't have to write a single line of machine learning code. And actually that's the case for all the services we've discussed so far, right? Yeah. They're just one API call away. Yeah. You don't need to be a machine learning specialist to use them at all. Well, let's right? not forget, like, uh, Comprehend also does a very simple but very useful thing, which is a language detection. Tell yeah. me what language sure. this text is <laughs> yeah. written in. I remember when I was working in Kindle, uh, many years ago, right, we had uh, people publishing their content, publishing their books on Kindle, and for us it was actually important to say, okay, sure. what language is this uh, published in? And I know the troubles that we went through in trying to uh, you know, build uh, this solution, and now it's basically at the tip of your fingers with just an API yeah. call away. Super yeah. simple. All right, um, let's move on. Let's move on to another service. Uh, let's talk about chatbots for a minute. Uh, so we have a service called Lex, right? And chatbots are a pretty, uh, pretty hot topic for, uh, for uh, machine learning and AI in general. So Paul, tell us a bit about Lex and uh, maybe about a customer or two that use it. Well, yes, I mean, chatbots are a hot topic because now it's all about changing the user experience. You want to have that conversational type exchange. And that's really the capability you get through a service such as Lex. So for example, if you're doing your car insurance quotes, we've got customers such as Liberty Mutual who are doing this. You, don't, you want to ask a series of questions and extract that data very, very quickly in a much more natural way. And that could be via voice or it could be via um, a chatbot type interface, maybe via text. So by using either of these interactions, you get very, very natural, but very, very, very quickly, you can capture the information you, you need from your customers. Dennis, any, mm. uh, any example for Lex? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, well, one thing we could add, of course, is that the underlying engine behind it is uh, kind of drawing a lot from the Alexa ecosystem, but this is now... As you could imagine right, from the, uh, the similar uh, yeah. names, right? The Not names. A coincidence. Uh, and, uh, I've written a few skills myself, <laughs> and it's actually fairly easy to write a skill uh, yeah, it is. Uh, for, for Alexa, and again, you know, we're, we're talking about Alexa, which is in every single room in our family, maybe except yeah. for the toilet. Uh, <laughs> that's something to uh, really? consider. Right. But now Lex is allowing you to basically build the same kind of conversational yeah. experiences into uh, your own websites, your own mobile apps, and your own environments. And that's not necessarily tied to Alexa ecosystem. So these services are, are cool. They're super simple to use. Any developer can use them in minutes. So how about a quick demo, right? Because <laughs> we okay. talk, we yeah. talk, we yeah. talk about, yeah. about a quick demo. So let's switch to, uh, to my screen, um, and please let's make sure we have uh, output, uh, we have audio output uh, to, the, to the chat channel. And uh, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I, I, let's say that's my business problem. I, you know, my business problem is uh, I want to actually detect uh, text in pictures. This is a, a Super Bowl ad, so I have to apologize to our UK viewers. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my example for today. And I want to detect the text in there. I want to detect the language. I want to translate it into other languages. And I want to speak those translations, OK? And a few years ago, that would be science fiction, right? You've been yeah. machine learning for a while. And you know, you've been yeah. there for a while, too. You know, <laughs> a few years ago, no one could really do that uh, easily. You had to be a, 
a, a huge R&D lab or a huge company to have the resources and the skills to do this. Okay, so let's see how we can do this now. So, well, let's look at the code maybe first, and all it takes is just this. I'm going to use recognition to detect text in the image, another of the recognition uh, features here. I'm going to use comprehend to detect language. I'm going to speak it in English, because it is English. And then I'm going to translate it to Spanish, uh, Portuguese, French, and German, right? And uh, speaking those translations again. And as you can okay. see, every single operation is just one API call. And it's probably 20 lines of Python. And look, come on, everybody can write this, right? Even if you've uh, just started writing Python code, you can do this. Okay, so let's try and run it now. So, here's the text, here's the language. Mm -hmm. And here are the translations. Okay. Less than 10 API calls, real time, good quality. What's not to like, right? Yeah. I mean, I really seriously love those services. And if you want to integrate high level, uh, machine learning and AI capabilities to your app, this is how you do it. So here I'm using Python, but of course you could use any of our SDKs, yeah. uh, C++, JavaScript, uh, Java, and you know, Golang and Ruby. I'm not going to do them all, but <laughs> there's a long list, right? So not just Python, not just Python. Cool. Okay, uh, we have a few more minutes, and uh, we can switch back to the camera, please. Uh, and I cannot leave this stage without talking about my darling service, SageMaker. All right, uh, so it's, uh, well, Dennis, tell us about SageMaker, because <laughs> I just talk about it all the time. <laughs> okay, okay, let me give it a shot. Uh, so basically, SageMaker appeals to a lot of people who know, uh, right, a lot of people who understand the algorithms, want to tweak them around, and want to really build custom solutions, because a lot of what we described so far is really based on API level, right? We've already gone through a building the model, you don't need to supply the data for that model, right? But sometimes you need a custom model for your specific application, and that's where SageMaker shines because, and it's not just really a service, it's an entire kind of ecosystem workflow of you know, building machine learning algorithms, testing them, evaluating them, right, and then putting them to production. Right? So, so starting from you know, opening up a Jupyter notebook and actually you know, having data scientists perhaps try the algorithms themselves, adapt them, tweak them, and of course we also provide some algorithms uh, out of the box, and then you can take uh, those algorithms, uh, marry them with your potentially large data sets, right, and uh, kick off the training jobs, build the models, and all comes out in the form of a simple Docker container. We publish the specification, and then you're able to deploy, create endpoints, and basically very quickly put this into production. Uh, and it's all fully managed, right? I mean, that's what I love. Yeah. I, 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 I can focus on, uh, on the actual machine learning task, understanding yeah. the data, selecting an algo, trying out different algos, et cetera, et cetera, and infrastructure becomes invisible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really, one again, one API call away. If I need 50 instances to train on a super large yeah. model, that's it. Yeah. Fire up that training cluster, and, and once I have a model, fire up my you know, prediction cluster, and it's just one API call, and I never worry Mm. about anything else, right? I just focus on my machine learning job. So, uh, Paul, have you started working with uh, customers on, on SageMaker, any, any example? Yes, uh, I mean, a lot of our customers are really interested in how they can start deploying SageMaker at the edge, actually. So, when we talk about using devices at the edge, what we're really saying is how can you actually take your machine learning models and deploy them onto your end devices, such as, for example, detecting faces on the actual cameras themselves. Yep. So working with, in the travel and transport sector in particular, we're working with a couple of customers who are really interested in looking at how can they actually start detecting known customers on their cameras and actually start using models they've imported from SageMaker to start looking at um, doing customized check-in. So by the time you check into your hotel, by the time you get to reception, they already know who you are. Okay. So quite exciting. Well, All right. One thing to note oh, actually, yeah, maybe, uh, is that what we're seeing 
uh, is that they're data scientists who really know their stuff, right? And they, they're able to build the algorithms, but they're struggling with actual deployments and turning yeah. out production services. And on the other hand, we have talented engineers, right, who are able to do this, but are struggling with AI. And kind of SageMaker is able to marry these two worlds and make it easy for both to kind of yeah. build uh, complete solutions out there. Right? Yeah. So uh, a couple of questions from the, from the channel. Um, so what are the typical languages you would use for machine learning, right? So we, for the high level services, you know, I guess we answered that. We said, okay, literally you can use any of the AWS SDKs to use Poly and, and Lex and Translate, et cetera, right? All the, all, the SD, all the language SDKs will support those services. But when it comes to actually building your own machine learning model, what, what do you see customers using most? Oh. Python is naturally yeah, uh, Python. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Python for choice. me every time. Uh, so. The Python yes. crowd is. Really <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> Anything else? No, but I mean uh, honestly, it's uh, just like with everything. Uh, you pick the right tool for the job. In fact, I was doing a demo uh, earlier in Seattle, and uh, this was written in Java, and so I got a lot of uh, funny comments from the crowd. Hey, why are you doing Java? And it's like, well, uh, I mean that why that not? was more convenient yeah. at yeah. that time. Yeah. So it's yeah. really uh, up to you. Yeah, yeah, pick the right tool. Another question on, uh, on Translate. Uh, what are the languages supported today? Uh, so you know that yeah, one, yes, all right, yes, let's yes, check. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, uh, we're translating from English to six other languages and vice versa. And so we're talking about 12 uh, language pairs at the okay. moment. We're working on six additional uh, language pairs to, uh, not six, six additional languages yes. to actually support, uh, to be correct. And uh, so we saw actually in my demo, we saw French, yeah, Portuguese. Spanish, uh, Portuguese, and German. Correct. And I think we have Arabic, Arabic and Chinese. And, Chinese. Yeah. and the next six, uh, there's the real uh, challenge. Okay, well, Japanese, I know Russian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Japanese, Russian, uh, traditional Chinese, right. Czech, right. Yeah. Yes. Turkish. And I, oh my God, I'm forgetting one now. Uh, okay, all right. I got five out of six, not too uh, that's, so that's bad. Good. And, and I'm for, good. of course, uh, we'll have more, and uh, and if you want your own language to be supported in there, uh, get in touch with your AWS uh, representative, and if you don't have one, just go to the AWS forums, go to the Translate forum, and just you know ask or plus one uh, whatever post you see uh, requesting your language. Okay, your feedback is important in prioritizing. All right, awesome. uh, I think we're uh, I think we're done, right? So uh, I want to thank you very much thank for uh, for watching us today. It's just the first. Uh, part of the Twitch uh, broadcast. We're going to be here with you for two days. So stay with us. Plenty of really cool sessions and, and expert guests like, uh, like mine today uh, will be here to uh, answer your questions. And, uh, and if you are at the AWS Summit, just come and say hi. Yep. And uh, we'll have a Dennis, demo coming up thanks tomorrow. Thanks again. Right? Yeah, uh, and we'll be back with SageMaker tomorrow, uh, right? Oh, so excellent. SageMaker. So, uh, thank Paul, you, thank you. Pleasure to have That's you. Right. Okay. And well, thanks, stay Dennis. with us, right? Bye-bye. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.